stolen money back. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good to hear your voice, Linda. Well, and I'm curious if you, in all of your brilliant trend research, did you see the NDAA coming? Yes, in the sense that look at the abrogation of our rights over the years, beginning, of course, with the Patriot Act, uh, not beginning with it, but really accelerating with it. And you can see it in the works and with the warrantless wiretapping and and all of the, the types of – look, in New York City, you could walk down the street. Last year, they stopped and frisked over 600,000 people. Look what goes on in the airports, flying the friendly skies. You get groped and felt up. Yes, I can see this coming, and it's becoming worse because what's happened, Linda, it's become very clear. Four words kill this country. It's all tied together. It's called too big to fail. It killed capitalism. It's the merger of state and corporate powers. It's now called, by definition, fascism. Right. And fascism has come to America. Yeah, exactly. And I was making that point before the break. And I'm curious if you have any uh, feelers out there about whether there is anyone in Congress who is trying to come back with a counterpunch against the NDAA, and maybe Congress, as the ACLU is hoping, will clean up what they call their mess, Congress's mess, and that they should rescind this part of the NDAA. What do you think? Well, one person, you know, Chris Hedges, uh, he, he sued um, – the Obama administration just a few days ago. And now we're also hearing that Ron Paul is, um, he is uh, uh, putting in legend, proposing a bill uh, to repeal the indefinite detention provision. Mm -hmm. So other than Ron Paul speaking out, you know, there's silence from the gang of 535. And when, and, and Linda, when you look at, when the Senate passed the first version of the NDAA on December 1st, it passed 90, 93 to 7? It was incomprehensible, and it was Bernie Sanders, I think, was only one of the seven, and he was speaking so passionately against it. Yeah, again, look at the odds. So this is, and then when you looked at the debate, you, I watched the debate the other night in South Carolina, and, uh, you know, Mitt, Mittens Romney over there, you know, he was all for it when they asked the question. They they kept the question only to, uh, to I believe, Ron Paul and, and Romney, and, of course, Ron Paul came out against it. And, and passionately. But he's the only one out there that seems to be concerned about protecting our constitutional rights. And he doesn't give up. I know Dennis Kucinich is opposed to this too, Gerald and Linda, but there's not enough. You can count them on one hand. That's right. And that in and of itself comes back to something we were talking about, Gerald. This has the feeling to me and to a few others that something else is behind the scenes that there would not have been this push from the Department of Defense to have this kind of a, basically, it is an attack on the very Constitution of the United States. What in the world do you think could be coming that would maybe explain the shell game right now with the Defense Department pushing Congress and Congress either not caring not understanding or whatever else is wrong, that we would end up with this egregious statute. Yeah, what do they see in the future, Gerald? Well, it's, it, you know, we, we put out our top trends for 2012, and it ties all together. The first one is economic martial law. The economic systems are collapsing worldwide. There is no fixing the European problem. They're getting everyone ready for a Greek default, and that's the small one. That's the little baby in there, because then you have Italy, you have Portugal, you have Spain. Ireland's already bust, but Italy's the big one in there, and they're ready to go next. They can't sell these junk bonds that they have, and what the, government, what the European Central Bank is doing and um, is pumping 
money into the bank, so they buy the bonds to make it look as though they're – the government bonds to make it look as though there's a market for them. So what we're saying is, as you look around the world and what's going on, the bigger the failure is, the more they're clamping down. And I believe that they have in place they, – they put, they put the NDAA in place – because they're going to impose some kind of economic martial law, and there's going to be rioting in the streets, and they want to have things in place for when it happens. I believe this all ties back into the economy. I said this at the beginning when the panic of 08 hit. I said after all their recovery programs, after all their stimulus bailouts and rescue plans fail, the next thing they do is they clamp down on you. And this is what's going on in my belief, because if you put the pieces together with, of course, the repeal of the Posse Comitatus Act of 1878 within this bill, it now allows the military to take over police duties. Right. So to me, this is what's going on, and this is not conjecture. I'll make this really clear. Anybody can do it. All you have to do is go on Google, put in John Corzine's name, because I found this when I was looking up, you know, when the, when the MF Global thing was collapsing. And, and there I come up with a videotape. It's there for everyone to see. You put in John Corzine and Joe Biden. And there they are. Now, remember, the Obama team gets sworn in in January of 2009. I had said that when the Obama administration came into power, be careful. They may call a bank holiday because the financial situation is so bad. Right. It didn't happen. But there it is. There's a videotape of, of, Biden, of Biden campaigning for John Corzine as he's running for re-election of governor of New Jersey in 2009. And there in June, and there is Biden saying twice that the first thing the day after the Obama team was sworn in was whether or not to call a bank holiday. Mm -hmm. And he repeats it. He said, that's right, a bank holiday. So that was in 2009. Linda and George, that was before the Federal Reserve dumped in $16.5 trillion. That's right. That was before the European crisis hit us. There are bank runs now going on in Lithuania. Everyone I know in Greece has none of their money in the banks. In Hungary, they're bringing it over into Austria. In Italy, they're pulling it out, bringing it into Switzerland. People are concerned of what's going on. And when I say a bank holiday, this is no holiday. You don't get your money out. And then what happens when you do get your money out? They devalue it. That's what they did in 1933 when we were on the gold standard. They repegged gold to $35 an ounce after they forced the people to sell it at $20.52 an ounce. That's what they did in Argentina. So for me, and this is the lesson that I learned from MF Global. It's not only MF Global. They have all the, you're only as safe as the latest loophole that they put That's in, right. whether it's stocks, whatever it is. Wasn't J.P. Morgan involved in MF Global as well? Of course. Of course. They, 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 look, I, George, I know people in the business. Everyone knows that you don't clear that kind of money going back and forth without knowing about it. Exactly. My friends laugh when they heard John Corzine, the Honorable John Corzine, testis, testify in front of Congress. They're all in collusion. You've heard me say this over and over again. If the names on Wall Street were named Salenti, Caruso, Mandavi, Puccini, Rossini, they call it the mafia. Well, he's he's right, Linda. I know, absolutely. And, Gerald, I'm really wondering if you have sort of a, maybe on a wall somewhere in your office that here would be the signals to you that what is coming is going to be a real bank holiday, that the government is going to try to take firm control of the money system. Would there be signs to you and to others that that was going to occur, or are we going to be blindsided? We're going to be blindsided by it. Go back to 
when 9-11 happened, you know, I had been writing about this. It was a front-page story in USA Today, uh, in December 14, 2000. Anybody could Google that up. Uh, just several months before 9-11, they ran my top trends, and it said 2001 won't be our year, Trendseer says. I've been writing about, you know, Crusades 2000 and a, and a major terrorist strike on the U.S. So when it happened, and I live just north of, of Ground Zero, you know, uh, about an hour north, and I, I took my, I started closing out my accounts, and I'm ready to head to Canada because I don't know what's coming next. I didn't even know if they were going to hit the nuclear power plant at Indian Point. Well, I had most of my money in CDs. You were trapped. Wall Street. I couldn't cash them out. So this isn't going to be something where it's going to be an obvious kind of you know, economic meltdown. It may be a false flag. Look how they're gearing us up for war against Iran. Yeah. They'll blame it on those terrible terrorists or, or whatever. And we have to take these measures to protect the American people, and we're doing it for your good. And the yellow ribbons will come out and the flags will be flying. And if you protest, we have a mechanism in place to arrest you you got it george so it all ties back to me jeez it what? ties back to economic martial law and that's why they're putting this in place to keep the people in place yes because think about it think about the chaos that will happen if there's a bank holiday think of the businesses that'll close down think of how commerce will stop and we're not talking about one day are we jerry no, no, we'll go for a week or so. And then what they'll do, using the Argentinian model, and, and again, we have a link when we wrote about this story, what happened in Argentina. There's one woman who, who said how she had the money in her bank account and she was ready to buy a house that day. By the time she got all her money back, she could barely buy an automobile. Oh, my gosh. What they do is they only let you take it out a little bit at a time. And it's your money. It, again, it's not your money, George. That's what I learned from MF Global. It's not your money unless you have it in your pocket. Yes, I, that's true. That is true. You, do, do you, you think th it's your money. Do you think this is going to the heart of why Romney has apparently a tremendous amount of cash stashed uh, out uh, east of Bermuda? Yes. I believe that's why a lot of people are taking their money all over the world. They're putting it, they're, they're looking for safe havens with it. Everyone knows what's going on in Europe. You even had the, you know, the every, look, I've been in this business for over 30 years. For over 30 years, every new year begins, you hear the politicians come out, in Europe particularly, and saying what a great year they did, all the wonderful things that they did for us, and next year is going to be better. Here are just a couple of quotes. This extraordinary crisis, without doubt, the most serious one since World War II is not over. Talking about the, the European Monetary Union crisis. That was Nicholas Sarkozy on New Year's Day. 2012 will, quote, no doubt be more difficult than 2011. The continent faces its harshest test in decades. That's Angela Merkel. The fat years are behind us. We must prepare ourselves for some lean years. That's the Danish prime minister, one after another. I mean, listen, you're hearing Sarkozy say this is the most serious year since World War II. The Germans are occupying France, and he's comparing it to that. Wow. And this NDAA coming in the afternoon of New Year's Eve, as if Obama doesn't want anybody to realize right. they snuck what it he's in. doing. But it is, uh, Gerald, why do you think that this is not the headline on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, every one of the networks? Why? Are, are they not? No, I made an announcement this year. I turned down several major appearances on the networks this year. I won't go on them anymore. And the only way I go on them is if they come to my office and we broadcast live out of here. Because they're the prostitutes. They suck up, bow down. They're part of the whole club. They're part of the whole scene. All these people are these reporters. 
They're the same people that wanted to be the head of the high school newspaper in college and in, in, <laughs> and, and, and the same ones in college and high school. They, they, and it's like they're talking to the principal or the president of the college. There's, there's not a man or woman among them. I have no respect for any of them. Well, Rachel Maddow was trying to say, hey, 